Now, it is known in Canada as the Highway of Tears, a 720-kilometre stretch of road where hundreds of Indigenous women have gone missing, many of them found dead. And after years of indifference by authorities in Canada, their fate is finally becoming a national story. In today's Focus report, we go to meet some of the relatives of those women whose mysterious disappearances from as far back as the 1970s continue to go unsolved. Another seemingly endless Canadian highway. It's on roads like these that women have been disappearing one by one. In 2008, Jennifer Catchway's parents were getting ready for her 18th birthday party. But she never came home. The fact is she's missing. The fact is we don't know what happened. If Jennifer could be home, she would be home. She was never a runaway. The police first suggested Jennifer could be out partying. Her parents say their concerns weren't taken seriously. Ten years since her disappearance, Jennifer's family still has no answers. 2010. A non-Indigenous went missing. This girl. Went missing. When she went missing, that over a thousand uh, People, 1,500 15, searchers. Over 1,500. There's no equality. Like, there's no equality. Obviously, there's only 15 of us searching when my daughter went missing. She's Aboriginal. In the span of 30 years, almost 1,200 Aboriginal women were killed or reported missing. Though they represent only 4% of the Canadian population, 16% of female homicides were committed against Indigenous women. It's the festive day for Dakota Tipi First Nation. For the tribe, it's the day they hope other Canadians can come and learn about their culture by performing traditional dances in traditional clothes. But even on occasions like these, tribe members are wary of the situation for their young women. There's people out there that are taking our, our girls and it's scary. The women here say younger members become vulnerable when they leave their close-knit community of just 350 inhabitants. In the cities, they, are, they don't have the resources or the support they, you know, to um, be in a better environment or situation, so they lead into other negative uh, uh, lifestyles, and then they, that makes them very vulnerable. Faced with discrimination and poverty, many fall into drugs, alcohol or prostitution. Aboriginal women in Canada are a population at risk. Let's get to it. Here in North End, Winnipeg, we follow a patrol group that do the rounds in an area that has a sizable Indigenous population. Poverty, drug abuse, uh, solvent abuse, all that kind of stuff, yeah. Um, so we have the Indigenous men are, are incarcerated 70%. In just half an hour, these volunteers find dozens of used syringes. We even witness a woman who runs over for help. We got into a big fight inside his place. Somebody stopped it. Aboriginal women are three times more likely to be victims of sexual assault than their non-Aboriginal counterparts, and they're disappearing at an alarming rate. Because you just never know what's going to happen. Like somebody, I actually almost got attacked just over there. Um, a car pulled up and um, op they opened the door, but I immediately started screaming and ran the other way. This volunteer says women of these communities have been abandoned. As long as they're you know, suffering in silence in a quiet corner where nobody else can see, they don't care. And that's the problem. We need to, you know, if we had a couple social workers that were going around and looking at the things that we see on a daily basis, we can make a real change here in the community. For years, Canada ignored the murders and disappearances of Aboriginal women. It wasn't until 2014 when the high-profile rape and murder of a 15-year-old girl prompted thousands to take to the streets and the wounds of a 150-year-old history resurfaced. This local representative says the neglecting of Indigenous women started with colonization. Whereas Indigenous women were seen as equal and life givers and all of these really positive things, colonizers, settlers, explorers started to shift that narrative from one to um, whore or prostitute or that indigenous women and girls were promiscuous. 
The Canadian government has launched a national inquiry into the missing and murdered Indigenous women. Meanwhile, these First Nations are still waiting for news from their loved ones.